In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the user interface for Photoshop 2024. Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, we're going to explore the user interface for Photoshop 2024. I'm going to show you how to customize the workspace and also show you where everything is. Now, if you want to follow along, I have included the file that I use in a link in the description of this video. Go ahead, download that, and then let's dive into Photoshop. Okay, so we've just opened Photoshop. You're probably going to see something like this unless you've already been working in Photoshop for some time. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to go to the open command here and inside the assets folder, you're going to find this layer sample PSD. Just going to use this to get you basically oriented with the Photoshop workspace. Now I am using Photoshop 2024. And if we go to about Photoshop, I'm using the 25.7 release. This is the latest version as of today. And in order to set up our workspace is the same. Let's go ahead and go to Window, Workspace, go to Photography, and then go to Reset Photography. Once you've done that, your workspace should look the same as mine. We're going to make some adjust adjustments to it and then save our own workspace. OK, so first, on the left here, we have our toolbar, and this is all of our tools in Photoshop. And if you see this little right triangle on the bottom of a tool, that means there's more than one tool in that toolbox slot. Uh, down here, these three dots is where we can edit our toolbar. And you can also see here the tools that are not in the toolbar based on the workspace that we're in. So if I go here, edit toolbar, and restore defaults. That'll put all my tools inside my toolbar. At the bottom here, you have your foreground and your background color. And then you have your quick mask. And then here, this is where you can change your screen mode. So this is full screen with menus. And then this is full screen without menus or palettes. To get out of that, hit F on your keyboard. And you can toggle through those by clicking F. OK, as I select a tool, you can see my options bar up here changes. And now one thing that I noticed in the latest version of Photoshop is that as you hover over your layers and also as you hover over your layers here, you get that blue preview box. I'm not a fan of that, so I'm going to go to this little gear icon and turn off the show layer bounds on hover and also turn off the show hover bounds from layers. Now when I hover over my documents or hover over my layers, I don't get those weird boxes showing up, kind of getting in the way of looking at my document. All right, after the toolbar, you have your canvas. This is your workspace. This is where your image is going to be, and this is where you can see what you're doing. Then on the right, we have our tool palettes, uh, or our palettes, I should say. These are all the various palettes, and you can see if you go under Window, all of the various ones that we have available to us. Now, we are going to set up a customized workspace, and in order to move any of these palettes, you just click on the name and then you can drag it around. You can place it anywhere where it highlights in blue. That's a place where you can place this palette. So you can see I can place it on the bottom, on the left of my canvas, on the right of my canvas, or between any of these. Also, if I hover here and you can see the little blue square, that'll turn it into a little icon. I'm going to do that for both of those so that I have my histogram and navigator up here and then my layers palette. The layers palette is the most important palette in Photoshop. So that's the one you kind of always want to have showing and the one you want to give the most real estate to. The only ones that I'm going to have above that is my history. And then the other one I like to have there is my color. So let's go ahead and open that. And then I'm going to drag this so that it's next to my histogram here. 
And if you see the hue cube, something like this, go ahead and change that to color wheel. This is kind of the, in my opinion, the best one to have because it does give you some clues as to how to mix colors once you start working with color channels, which we're going to do a little bit later. Okay, so now that we have that set up, the other thing I want to customize here is my toolbar. And to customize your toolbar, you're going to go to these three dots, click and go to edit toolbar. And the reason you want to uh, customize your toolbar is so that you only have the tools that you're actually going to use. Now, the more you work in Photoshop, you'll find that there are certain tools that you don't ever use or tools that you only use once in a blue moon. And there's no good reason to have those cluttering up your toolbox. And also, if you click here, disable shortcuts for hidden toolbars, the advantage with that is when you use a single letter shortcut, you don't have to toggle through more than one tool. So here, I'm going to go ahead and move the artboard to my extra tools and realize you can access all these tools from these three dots. So it's not like you have to go back into your preferences and turn these tools back on. They're still all still available inside of Photoshop. All right, I'm going to take the single row marquee and move those. I'm going to take these lasso. So I just have one lasso tool. I'm going to leave these for the crop. I'm going to move the entire box here and then just move my crop tool back in here. I don't need the frame tool. And for the eyedropper, again, you can move individual tools or the whole block. So I'm going to move the whole block and just move my eyedropper back. I don't need my content aware move or my red eye tool. For brushes, I'm going to move the whole thing and just move my brush back. I'm going to move the pattern stamp out. For this project, we're not going to be using the history brush, so I'm going to move those out. And for this, I just want my normal erase tool, so I'll move those other two. Gradient is one I use all the time, but I never used a paint bucket tool, so I'm going to move that out. And I'm going to leave these dodge and burn tools. And for the pen tool, I also am just going to have the pen tool there. I don't want these other tools. And for the type tool, I also just want my horizontal type. And the rest of these we're going to leave. So there you go. Let's hit Save Presets, and we can call this Nuclear Course, and hit Save, and then hit Done. One more thing I want to do is add a shortcut to hide my contextual taskbar. So with the contextual taskbar, you can go down here and pin the bar position, which I recommend. That way, as you're moving around um, and selecting various layers, if you don't have it pinned, it's going to travel with you. So as you select the different layer, it's going to move around. So if I reset the bar position here, and select, for example, the wing layer here, you can see that the taskbar is moving around with me. Um, I'm not very keen on that behavior. I kind of prefer the taskbar just staying in one place. So I'm going to click here, pin bar position. The other thing is I'd like a shortcut that allows me to hide the taskbar if I don't want it in the way. So in order to do that, we're going to go to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. And this allows you to basically assign any shortcuts for any tool or any menu item inside of Photoshop. Now, the let's go ahead and cancel out of that real quick. The contextual taskbar you're going to find under Window and down here. Now, you can see I've already assigned a shortcut to it, but you will not have that shortcut. So let's go to Edit keyboard shortcuts. We're going to go down to window, scroll down until we get to the contextual taskbar, click right here, and then hold down command option and R. Now you'll probably see a warning here telling you that that's already assigned to the select and mask workspace. If you use that shortcut, you can go ahead and give this another shortcut. I hardly ever 
use this shortcut um, when I need to use select and mask workspace. It's usually when I have a selection already, in which case the select and mask workspace button appears in my tool option. So I don't need the shortcut. So I'm going to hit accept and then hit OK. So now I can use Command, Option, and R to show or hide that. Um, the reason I give it that shortcut is I already use Command R to show and hide the ruler. So this is one that's kind of easy for me to remember. Okay, now that we've done all that and organized this how we want, what we're gonna do is save this workspace. So to do that, we're gonna go to Window, Workspace, New Workspace, and let's call this Nucle Course. And we did customize our toolbar, so I'm going to select that. And we did customize keyboard shortcuts. Now, we didn't make any customization to menus, so I'm going to leave that turned off and then hit Save. Now, the beauty of this is if we go here and select one of these other toolbars, or sorry, other workspaces, you can see our palettes have changed, our tools here have also changed. But I can always go back here, select Nuclear Course, and then we're back to how I want this arranged. Okay, so with all that done, there's a few other things I want to change in the preferences before we start working on the course. And these are things that just are preferences that I personally have, and I think you're going to prefer them as well. But if not, you can skip over this step as well. So to get to our preferences, we're going to go to Photoshop, Settings, and General, or Command-K on your keyboard. And here I'm going to go down to the Tools, and I want to turn off these Show Rich Tooltips. That basically brings up menus, or sorry, videos, when you hover over your tools. I don't need that, so I'm going to turn those off. I'm also going to turn off this Use Shift key for Tool Switch. So Every tool has a single letter shortcut. And if you have more than one tool with the same shortcut, so for example, the marquee, which is M, has an elliptical marquee and a square marquee, um, you can use the shift key, so shift M to switch the tool, or you can just toggle through the tools by hitting M more than once. I prefer the latter behavior, so I'm going to turn this off. I'm also going to turn off this double click layer mask launches the select and mask workspace. I prefer when you turn this off, it brings up your mask preferences, which is my preferred behavior. So I'm going to turn that off. And that's pretty much it. The rest I'm going to leave at default. Let's just go down here and see if there's anything else I want to change. I don't think there is. Okay, so let's hit okay. Just a quick orientation on layers and how they work. So basically layers allow you to stack multiple images on top of each other with transparency. So for example, if I turn off this little eyeball means the layer is showing or not showing. So if I turn off all those eyeballs, you can see I just have my background and these are adjustment layers, meaning they're adjusting everything below that in the layer stack. So making it darker, lighter, changing color, what have you. In this case, it's making it a little bit more contrasty. And then these are shape layers. So with a shape layer, you basically have a shape that you can assign a fill to, a stroke to, you can change the size of, etc. All right, we have another shape layer here. And you can see as I select this with my shape or path selection tool, you can see these options up here. We have a type layer and you can see my taskbar changed and I can change here the font or I can go on the type tool and then I'll have my tool options up here. Remember, whichever tool you have selected, your tool options bar up here will change. And then we have other layers. And as you can see, with multiple layers, you can stack things on top of each other. And where an object is in your layer stack influences how it will appear in your image. So for example, my layers here 
is below the phonograph and below the birds. However, if I drag it up here, you can see that now in the image, it's appearing on top of those elements. So you can think of the layer stack as working from the bottom, meaning your base layer. And then as you move up in the layer stack, those are all gonna stack on top visually in your 3D space. So here, I'm gonna move my layer down below the phonograph here. And here we have other butterflies and you can see those there. Now, if you see this little icon here, that means it is a smart object. And a smart object is another image that's nested and which you can copy so that you have multiple iterations of it. Now, a good use case for that is if you had uh, a, you know, like a logo and you wanted it in several places in your image, well, you could make that a smart object. And then if you're doing the same image, but for a different brand, you can double click and it'll open that logo. You can change the logo and when you save it, it'll update in all the locations where you're using that smart object. Another thing that you can do with smart objects is you can save a whole bunch of layers into one smart object. So you can reduce the number of layers you have in your file by basically nesting a bunch of layers into one smart object. There's other things that you can do with smart objects and we'll cover those as we get into our actual composite. But I just wanna give you a quick overview here of your layers. Um, another thing you'll see here is this link icon. So you can link layers together by selecting them and then clicking on this link icon. And that works as a toggle. If you wanna unlink them, you can unlink them as well. And the advantage with that is if you select one and move it, all those layers will move at the same time. They will also transform at the same time, meaning they will you know, rotate or shrink. So if you go to edit free transform, which is command T on your keyboard, you'll notice that even though I only have one butterfly selected, all these butterflies are in my selection and that's because they are linked. Now, I don't wanna do this transform, so I can click on this here or hit escape on my keyboard. So there you have it. That is the user interface for Photoshop 2024. Now this is the first lesson in my upcoming course where we recreate this composite that you see here from start to finish. And through that, we explore a lot of the tools for compositing inside of Photoshop. We're gonna look at generative fill, generative expand, some retouching tools, selection tools, blending, color grading, camera raw, and so much more. If you're interested in that course, I have included a link to the waitlist where you can sign up and hear about it as soon as it releases. Otherwise, if you're interested in tutorials and tools for Photoshop, go to nuclead.com. I sell professional training and professional tools for Photoshop. Otherwise, here are some other tutorials that you can check out, and I'll see you next time.